Hey there, welcome. This is The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Happy Memorial Day. Are you at work today, too? Or are you, you goofing off? Well, whatever you're doing. Just uh, be sure that you take a minute or two today and just at least think a little bit about what this day means. Uh, the historical significance, the empty chairs at Christmas that happen that Memorial Day is supposed to remind you of. And Memorial Day is the sister Remembrance Day from Veterans Day. Veterans Day is where we remember people who served in the military. Memorial Day is for the people we remember who died in service of the military. And for my Memorial Day rant, uh, it's, it's ridiculously optimistic for such a negative day. Because I like to make the case that not only should we honor our soldiers that fell. We should honor the guys that died so you and I could be here living this luxurious life that they could have only dreamed of. It's also excellent to remember how awesome these guys are, how amazing our military is. What what a historic institution for good our military has been. And I like to point that out by point by by starting with the, the the blanket statement here that the United States has has never really lost a war. We don't even know what that's like in America. Other countries do. Other civilizations, especially throughout history, they know what losing a war is like. I mean, you can go all the way back through time. Go to, go to the Bible. You don't think the Israel knows what it's like to lose a war. You don't think the Assyrians know what it's like to lose a war. The Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, they, I mean, the Egyptians, they all know. Have we ever really lost a war? What's our closest one? Well, I think you, you can make two, two close cases, and really only two are even remotely close. So I'm going to start by, by, by just rattling off the obvious obvious victories of course of course the revolutionary war we won that one war of 1812 we'll get back to that one but we did win it mexican-american war we won that one far and away uh civil war i mean does that really count but yes we won that uh spanish-american war world war one world war two korean war vietnam we did not lose the gulf war at all we did not lose the war in afghanistan we did not lose the iraq war and let, let me make my case here, because some of you are rolling your eyes already, and I can hear you rolling your eyes, but I'll, maybe the closest case you can make is Vietnam. Let's look at some statistics real quick. 58,000 dead for the United States, 300,000 wounded, 1.6 thousand missing. The North Vietnamese had, depend, their estimate is 850,000 dead. Our estimate of their combat deaths is 950,000 dead. So... About 20 times for every one American soldier lost in the Vietnam War, the North Vietnamese lost maybe 18 to 20. Wow, that's pretty positive. They had more than twice as many wounded. Now, remember, we had 1.6 thousand missing. They had 232,000 missing. So actually, their dead number could be quite a bit higher. And if you want to attribute half of those to uh, deaths, which is being very generous, then our kill ratio is over 1 to 20. That's pretty pretty huge success. But the reason why I say that it's ridiculous to say we lost the Vietnam War is the Vietnam Vietnamese communists never took an American life on American soil, did they? They never took one of our cities. They never invaded. They never took one square inch of our territory. They never even set foot in our country. So how is this a loss? We didn't lose any major battles. Our casualty numbers are minuscule compared to the enemy we didn't run out of men we didn't run out of supplies we didn't run out of funding it just ended when we got tired of kicking their butts up and down the coast for a decade and we said well if these idiots still want to be communists let let them be communists that's not losing a war losing a war is when historically speaking you die and your farm is taken over Uh, you lose territory and the territory that used to be in your country is now part of another country. I mean, it gets a lot worse than this if you want to talk about what it means to lose a war. And you can make the same case for Afghanistan. We didn't lose in Afghanistan. We just got tired of kicking their butts for 20 years and we got out. But our losses are minuscule 
compared to them. Do you realize what it, I mean? I, I think Afghanistan is actually a wild success story. We went over there. We took what is thought to be an untouchable hellhole wasteland that the Soviets couldn't even hold for 10 years. We held it for 20 years. We had less than one tenth of the casualties the Soviets had in twice the time, almost three times the time. I mean, we were losing as many people a year in training exercises in the United States in the military as we lost in Afghanistan some years. But look at what a major success story the Korean War was. That's, people complain about that, but uh, thir- there's 32 million South Koreans that aren't complaining about it, complaining about our intervention there. And yeah, we only got to save half of that peninsula from the hellhole prison camp of North Korea. You know, it's too bad. And that's just because we lost the will to save all the Korean peninsula from the nightmare of communism. But we did say half of it. Thank you very much. So maybe you have a Samsung phone or a Samsung refrigerator. You drive a Kia or a Hyundai or maybe you have a giant LG TV in your living room. All that South Korea, all that thanks to the military sacrifice from the Americans in the Korean peninsula. There wouldn't be a K-pop. There wouldn't be Gangnam Style or BTS. All of those people owe their fame, their fortune, their glamour, success, and luxury to the people that we're remembering today in the U.S. military on Memorial Day. That is a raging success story. No, we couldn't save them all, but we saved half of them. We saved half of an entire group of people, of millions of people, from all being in North Korea. Raging success story. So what war have we lost? Maybe you can make a case for 1812 just because those evil Canadians came down and burned the White House. I mean, they had British help, but there were Canadians there too. But we still ended up winning that war. We still ended up driving them off. And right after that, we beat the snot out of them uh, over by Pittsburgh. We beat the snot out of them over by Baltimore. We signed a treaty that was favorable to us. We entered the British blockade. And then after it was all done, we went ahead and beat them in New Orleans, even after the whole war was over, just for fun. Now, we haven't lost a war. We haven't lost. The, the, it, and the summary is, here's the takeaway for Memorial Day. None of these lives were wasted. No, I'm not saying we've been a c- perfect country. No, I'm, I'm not saying we've done everything right. No, I'm th- th- this is a human endeavor. Of course, there were accidents and boo-boos. But this is the best country and the best society worth defending ever in history. And if you had to lose a, a, a grandfather or you had to lose an uncle or you had to lose a brother fighting for this country, it was the most noble sacrifice any soldier has made in the history of mankind is defending this society, defending you, defending Texas, defending the United States. No one has brought more freedom and human rights to the globe than the United States. And that's why they died. And it was absolutely worth it. They are all 100% Heroes. 800 288 WBAP. This is the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3.